Greetings our Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters. This is L.D. Smith, the watchman on the wall. Your watchman Israel. Israel, it is our Sabbath. Grab that King James. Oh, we got a fine one tonight. We got a fine teaching as, as always. But first and foremost, we want to give a shout out to the whole family. Happy Sabbath, Israel. Now, that being said, let us get to the business at hand. Uh, Israel, um, I want to uh, commend you guys uh, for your diligence uh, to the word of the Most High. You know, as I said before, we are public, and most of you guys know that we are. And um, we have uh, these, in the, these different individuals come on our page, and I believe they be trying to search out for weak ones. You know, they be posting all kind of bullshit, dumb shit. You know, trying to trying to seek out, you know, a weak one. But um, I'm I'm so proud, and and I'm so happy to see, you know, that you guys are steadfast in the word of the Most High. I mean, uh, I just. I'm just over overjoyed to to see you guys' comments. Um, uh, even the ones that are not, you know, saying it, anything. I know that you're not paying the bullshit in their teaching. So, oh, that's good, you know. And I really, really, you know, appreciate you guys um, being being a uh, 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 steadfast in the word of the Most High. Now that being said, um. We're going to go forward into our teaching tonight. As I said before, we have a very, very fine teaching tonight. Um, uh, it's coming out of the, the, the New Testament. And as I say always, uh, uh, my, my goal is to, um, to uh, disprove uh, Lucifer, a.k.a. Jesus, every chance I get. And that's every Friday. Every, every every Sabbath, you know, I, I mean, it's it, it just so joyful to, to come and just shred these uh, pages of the New Testament. Even though I don't like reading this bullshit, uh, I have to do it in order to disprove him. Uh, now, that being said, let us go into our teaching. We're going to be coming from the book of 1 Corinthians. And my brothers and sisters, as I always say, I want you to think about what what we are saying tonight think about what we are reading and i know that the most high will will give you an understanding now uh i want you to think about it because words are very very important okay now that being said let us go here to the book of first corinthians verse chapter one we're gonna read verse 25 and then we're gonna we're gonna look at that and then we're gonna uh build a platform and then we're gonna just go forward off of that and now I'm I'm going to shred this New Testament all the pieces. All right, now let's go for it. Uh, First Corinthians chapter one verse twenty five. It says, "Because the foolishness of God." I'm gonna stop right there for a minute. Those are some very very inflammatory words that are uh, uh, that really pisses me off. I mean, it's very uh, like I said. Uh, I have to. Uh, come out of this book in order to prove them wrong but 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 words like this here really really pisses me off i mean it ticks me off and i can't see uh i mean i i i i i, I try to understand why uh someone doesn't see it and 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 then oh think that they know god i know god i know i, I know god why would you read this bullshit here you know and then uh say that you know god and see these um Inflammatory words here that uh, depicts the Most High as as uh, one that is not complete, one that uh, is a uh, uh, foolish, one that is uh, weak, one that is uh, that 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 doesn't have it all together. But yet, and still, Jesus has uh, so called has it all together. He has all the answers. But yet, and still, the Most High, he just ain't got it. I mean, can't you guys see? I mean, how uh, the, the the New Testament depicts the Most High as a punk. I mean, it's right in the pages. He says here, but because the foolish enough, so God is foolish. That's what you're saying. You saying the Most High is foolish? Then it goes on say, is wiser than man, and the weakness of God is stronger than man. Now I'm going to deal with this foolish part first, and then we're going to come back. And, and we're going to deal with this this weak part, okay? Now, he said that God is foolish, okay? Now, and this is this is Paul. This is this is a man calling the creator foolish. 
So that he 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 is he is foolish in some way, and that can be further from the truth. But like I said, my brother and sister, it's right in the pages. All through the all, all through this New Testament, it depicts the Most High as a punk. I mean, just downplays him all the way, and then by downplaying him, see Jesus is uh, exalted. It's right here in the pages. Now let us go forward. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, let's look at some, something here. Let's go to Psalms 139. Let's go there. Like I say, I always say, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. If you go back, then you'll find out, you know, uh, that you've been lied to. I mean, about everything. I mean, and listen. This country here have lied to us about everything, and still is. Even today, even while I speak, they, they would not tell you the truth. They disrespect you in all manner, as well as they, they disrespect the Most High. Now let's look here at Psalms 139, and we're going to read uh, these verses here. Now let's, let's read these 139 here. It says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and know me. God knows everything. God is not foolish about nothing. God knows everything about you and I. Not only that, listen, your life is already written. The script for you and I is already written before you become to the world. This, this is God's program. This is God's planet. This is God's universe. This is God's solar system. Everything belongs to Him and Him alone. Now, let's go forward here. Thou knows my setting down, huh? And my uprising. But see, when uh, uh, the, the Christian read this, they just read over. They don't see that this thing is loaded. This thing is power packed. This thing is full. It says that God knows everything. And I mean everything. Now look what he says here. He says here, My rising up, my uprising, uh, thou understandest my thoughts. A fall. In, in other words, even before they come into my mind, you already know what I'm going to think. I mean, my brothers and sisters, right in the pages. I mean, but simply like when you get into Christianity and that bullshit over there, you know what I mean? Listen, I, 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 I keep saying it over and over and over. God instructs our lives. God influences everything into our lives. I mean, Joseph, Joseph said it, you know, when uh, his brothers came down there to Egypt. Because the family was in the land. He said, y'all did it for evil. Y'all, y'all was doing it, but y'all was, was doing it for evil, and y'all thought y'all was in control. He said, but God meant it for good. It's right there in the pages. All you got to do is take a little time. The Most High, he'll, he'll show it to you. Now watch this right here. He says, thou passes, compassing my path, and my lying down. And are acquaintance with all my ways. God knows everything that you're going to do. He knows. He knows all about what you're going to do. Even before you do it. See, so when you say, well, uh, uh, oh, I did this. Uh, uh, no, no, no. That's the way he planned it. Those are, his, those are his plans. And see, he gets pleasure out of it. I mean, you, you have to look at it from a perspective of he is... The ultimate God. He created everything. You know, and he is over everything. And he does whatever he wants to do. When he wants to. And to whoever he wants to. And how he wants to. You have nothing, and I repeat, nothing that you can do about it. That's why he says, can nobody stop me? And see, they, they say all this bullshit on television about, well, we're going to eradicate this and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. I mean, by what methods? By what means are you going to e eradicate things? See, let me tell you something. In my younger life coming up, I struggle with uh, not doing things. I mean, but, but, but the most high was in my life all the way up to where I'm, where I'm at now. I would, I would plan, I, I, I'm not going to do this. You know, I'm going, he would, he would bring it to me. Some kind of way God will make his plan come to pass. And, and my brothers and sisters, it's just like that in your lives also. Now let's go forward here. He say, verse 4 said, 
For there is not a word in, in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. In other words, you know everything I'm going to say. You know everything that's going to come out of my mouth. Already knows it. That's why the Bible, and see, this is a scripture that many, many people don't understand because the Most High has not given it to them. But he says that a man that is born of a woman, but in of a few days, is full of trouble. But they don't understand that. They read over it, read over it, and think that they know. What he's saying is, in a few days, everything that you're going to do, you know what I mean? All your troubles, all your woes, everything is in you. That's exactly what he's saying. In but a few days. All this stuff is already programmed in you. Your life is already set, set, set past where you're going to go, what you're going to run into, what you're going to do. All this thing is already there. Now look, look what he says here. Thou has beset me behind and before. See that? And laid thy hand upon thee. Before me and behind me. He said, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. David said, I don't even understand how you do this stuff. And that's how advanced God is above us. And then for, for one to, to, to bring such filthy words out of his mouth. And to downplay the most high. To say uh, the foolishness of God. God is not foolish at all. At no time. How can you, being a worm, something that God says, you ain't shit to me? Huh? How can you tell the Creator he is foolish in any way? I mean, how disrespectful. My brothers and sisters, how disrespectful for your child to come to you and call you foolish. What do you think about that? Wouldn't you think that those were some, some words that somebody needed to get smacked in the mouth about? Well, see, I'm here reading this bullshit, and it really pisses me off. When I went across the, the, this in the most I showed to me, I mean, it really pisses me off because it shows me how disrespectful uh, the New Testament is and the Christians are when it comes to the most high. And most of them don't even know it because their minds have been programmed to hate the most high and love Jesus. And they can't even see it. Now, let's go a little further here. He says here, he says, such knowledge, in verse 2, is too wonderful for, for me. It is high. I cannot obtain, huh, unto it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thee, from thy presence? If I ascend up into the heavens, thou art there. <laughs> I don't care where you go. I don't care where you go. He says, and if I make my bed in hell, be, be, be hell, or thou, or thou. In other words, even in the grave. And if I die, you're there. You're there. Even if I'm in the grave, you're there. Now he goes on here. He says, if, if I take the wings uh, of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me if I sh say surely the darkness shall cover me even the night shall be light about me now listen yea the darkness hide not from thee but neither but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both the light to thee. In other words, God said night and day is the same to me. <laughs> it may be different for, for, for you because you can't see, but uh, night doesn't bother my vision. I see everything. See, that's why my, my, my brothers and sisters, you know, uh, I've, I've been saying, you know, lately more and more, you know what I mean, um, about all these non-faced people, you know, coming out uh, our page saying this and that, you know, uh, not not nothing that is edifying Israel or uplifting Israel. They, they want to come on the page and try to teach, you know, and sell kind of thing, you know. They're not Hebrew. They're not because if they was Hebrew, they would see the same thing that, that the Most High is showing me. And it's right here in the pages. It's not that I'm bending the scriptures or I'm 
twisting words as I, I heard a couple say, you know, but that couldn't be further from the truth. I don't twist no words. I tell you exactly just like it is and how the Most High says it. And not only that, I encourage you to read along with me. I don't, I don't read and tell you what well, this is the bottom line and this is how it is and this is how, you know, it's going to be. No, I never said that to anyone. I ask you to read along with me. And the Most High will, will surely give you an, an understanding if you're Hebrew. That, those, those are my uh, uh, words. Uh, I, I never dictate to any anyone telling you, well, this is how it is and this is how it is and that. I, and I, I mean, that that's the way it is to me. Now, but uh, I ask you to read it along and then at the end, you make your own determination. Now, let's go forward here. Let's jump on down here to uh, verse 13. It says, For thou hast uh, possessed my reign, and thou hast covered me uh, in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I, I am fearful and wonderfully made. See that? Marvelous. All thy works and thy that and that my soul uh, knoweth uh, right well. Now he said him, God has made him wonderfully. I mean, but you got people that are so mad because of the way that they are, and most of the time it's it's people of color because people. Don't understand that God made you the color that you are. God made you the way that you are. And you know, um, uh, uh, they used to always call me black when I was little, you know, because they uh, figured, well, you know, we can uh, make them feel bad, you know what I mean? Oh, black this, oh, black that, but uh, I embraced my color. I, I mean, I, I never was ashamed of being black because that's who I saw when I looked in the mirror. But people would try to beat you down and beat you down and beat you down where you would hate yourself. Not me. Uh-uh. No. You got people that would buy this bleaching cream to change their, the, the, the tone and the color of their skin. Where they can be light. They don't want to be what God made them. And see, this is what the imagery of America and the world uh, 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 perpetuates, you know, this this not dark skin color but this light skin color this this is what it is you know white you know what I mean you're right light you know what I mean you know but see but let me say this in passage it's right in the pages why would you want to change something that God has made that's my question so God made a mistake God knew uh, uh, exactly what you look like inside your mother's womb now uh you came out and you said, well, I'm not, I'm not pleased with the way God made me. Let's find a way to change this. And this is, this is how, how, how uh, uh, the world gets, gets you out of focus with God and gets you on the, on the idea of, well, you want to be God or be like God. So I'm going to change what he uh, fucked up. In other words. But God doesn't mess up anything. God never made any mistakes. He's too wise. And many times the Christians, they will say that, but yet they still go right off and they want to do their, their own thing. Well, I don't like this. I don't like this. Well, this is the way God uh, planned it. And, and I'm going to show you guys that whatever transpires in your life, God does it and it pleases Him. It, it is for His entertainment. I know many, many may not believe it, but like, like, like I say, if I show it to you, then you have to believe it. Now, let's go forward here. Let's jump on down here. Well, uh, in, for, for time's sake, I want you guys to go ahead and finish reading Psalms 39 all the way down to verse 24. And then you'll get an idea of what's transpiring here. Now, let's go to uh, Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46. Let's, let's go there. And uh, let's see what the Most High says in Isaiah 46. Because, um, like I say, that over there, uh, it, it really bothers me because, you know, one want to say God is weak. God is not weak at all. God knows everything. Now, let's go to Isaiah 46. We can read verse 9 and 10. It says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Nobody like me. There is no God like me. He said, declaring, in other words, saying, this is what I say. 
the uh, the end from the beginning and from ancient time the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure in other words what if I say that's where it's going to be and that pleases me and that pleases me see this is this is the this is God God is not like the picture that they put Portray him to be Mr. Mr. Good at two shoes and all of that. No. No, God is terrible. He is one to be reckoned with. He is one to look at and say, wow. You know, I'm, t I'm telling you. God did everything. He does everything. Now, let's let's go uh, a little further here. Let's go to Job um, Job 42. Let's go back and look at Job 42, my brothers and sisters. Now, watch this right here. Job 42. Now, let's watch here. Let, let's look in the pages. Here and see what, see what the Most High says. Job 42. Let's read verses 1 and 2. It says, Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, huh? And that no thought can be withheld from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. See that? See that? God knows everything. Don't nothing catch him up by, su by surprise. But see, but you got these smart ass guys that come on our page. They want to teach about, well, you need to go and read this book here. You need to, listen, I, 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 I keep on saying over and over. I don't need to go and read a, no, the other books. You guys are reading them. That's good enough. Y'all just go ahead and keep on reading them. I don't need to read them. I got enough right here in the King James for the most how to tell me whatever he wants to tell me. And this, this idiot, he gonna write a whole, I mean five or six paragraphs about the book of Enoch and then all the other damn books. Look, I keep on telling you guys, with all this so-called knowledge, with no faces, with, with all this knowledge, get you a page and teach on it. That's all you gotta do. But no, but you wanna come over here and then try to teach and show everybody all over how much knowledge you got. Listen, that bullshit that you call yourself knowing, that number bullshit, okay? I don't want to hear it. The people that that's on this channel don't want to hear it. So take it and, and, and take it somewhere else. Take it to, to those who want to hear that bullshit. We have the Most High has given us everything that we need. And like I said before, if you had any common sense at all, if you had any instruction from the Most High, He would have showed you Daniel 4, 432. He would have showed you that. But see, but you 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 leave the, the book that he he used to carry you into captivity. You leave it and go up and start reading all the, all the other damn books, huh? Uh, God doesn't change. The same way he brought you in, he gonna bring you out. If you know anything about the Most High, now let's let's go a little further here. <clears throat> We're gonna go back and look at Second Corinthians. Let's let's go over here and watch us uh, look at some of this foolishness over here. Now this is foolishness. This is foolishness. Now he's talking about the foolishness of God. This is this here is foolishness. Now watch this right here. In Second Corinthians twelve. Let's look at verses nine and uh, yeah. Let, let me read verses nine and ten. Now it says, and he said unto him, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most uh, gladly, therefore, I will, I will, I rather glory in my infirmities, uh, that the power of Christ, not God, uh, may rest upon me. Wherefore, see, I, 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 like I say, I, 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 I show you guys here how they so deceptive in the writing. Now you thinking they talking about God? You talk about God for one minute, the next minute he's back on Christ. And look, he says, therefore, it please. Uh, uh, I take pleasure in infirmities, in rep reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. See that? Now, all the special here say for, 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 for Christ's sake, not God. Then he says, when he is weak, he is strong. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to disprove all that because anybody knows that uh, you can't make yourself strong. You can't. You can't make yourself weak. There are people that are in the hospital right now 
that are so weak and they want to be strong, but they still laying there weak, dying, believing this bullshit here. And like I said, it's nothing more than bullshit. Now let's go a little further. Let's go to Psalms 28 because we need to see what the Most High says. Let's go to Psalms 28 and see what the, what the Most High say here, says here about David. Now we're going to read Psalms 28, verses 7. It says, um, Psalms 28, verses 7. You guys can read all of it. It says, The Lord is my strength and my shield, my heart. Trust in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my songs will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointing. Save thy people, and bless thy inheritance. Feed them also, and lift them up forever. Talking about Israel. But this is this is not Israel being uh, able to give them themselves strength. God is. But see, but Paul over here, he's saying, she, he, when even when he's weak, he's strong. And that couldn't be further from the truth. And like I say, I'm gonna prove it. I prove everything I say. Now let's go to Psalms 18. Psalms 18. Let's go there real quick, my brothers and sisters. Now watch this right here. Psalms 18. Let's read verses 1 and 2. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. See that? My strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I, I will trust, my buckle and my horn and, and my, of my salvation and my high tower. See that? When you know where your help comes from, you're going to get some help. For instance, if you know that you, you like you be at, at home and you get thirsty, you know where your uh, your uh, refrigerator is. Is you know if, if you got water coming coming out your refrigerator, you know where your spigot is. You go over and get you some water. You know what I mean, and, and crunch it, and crunch your uh, thirst. But see here, uh, the, the New Testament teaches you where you can do all these things. But see, God is the one that pro provides these things, not you. And when you say you can do these things, then you put yourself in in a position of a God. I, I, I'm, I'm self-sufficient. I don't need. I don't need nothing. I can do all things my own self, and that could be for, for, from the truth. Now let's go to Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs, the twenty-eighth chapter. Let's go there. Now watch this, my brothers and sisters. Watch this. Uh, Proverbs twenty-eight. <clears throat> let's look at verses twenty-six. Now, Paul said that when he's weak, he's strong. He, I mean, he, he helps his own self. But look at 26 says, he that trusts in his own heart is a fool. See that? When you begin to trust in your own self, you ain't but a fool. And that's what uh, that's why I, I look at uh, uh, some of these guys that come over here, you know, trying to teach and stuff. They are they're after their own gratification. That they're, they're trying to be something that they're not. They're trying to lift themselves up instead of if God called you, look, he would be the one that lifts you up. You can't make yourself great. You can't make yourself a teacher. You can't make yourself, as you say, a preacher or whatever. You can't. God has to make you whatever you are. And just like I say on, 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 on many, many other occasions, I know for a fact that that the Most High is the one that that that, that instructs me and guides me through through all uh, all points of life in in everything. So, um, that being said, uh, I, I told you guys about, you know, some of the encounters that I had with him that uh, it, it scared me. Uh, things that your five senses don't understand, uh, it, it'll make you react, you know, in a different way. And when God deals with anyone that he chooses, you know, to be a spokesman for him, uh, he always does something that is against uh, nature itself. I mean, the natural, the natural thing, uh, he works against that. And when your five senses see something that is outside of the natural, 
it makes you, you know, run or it makes you try to get away from it. And I remember when uh, the rod that was in Moses' hand, the most high turned it into a serpent. And Moses ran from it. God had, God, come on, come on back, come on back, Moses. Pick it up by the tail. Pick it back up, pick it up by the tail. Zoop, back into a rod. Right before his eyes. I mean, but that's how God does things to prove to you, look, I'm with you. You don't, you don't have to fear. I mean, this is this is this is not you. This is this is me. I'm doing this, but I'm just using you. And see, that's why when they come on our page and, and then they think that they don't they don't wrote something down, you know, type typed in something. They think, oh, well, I got I got him. No, I beg the difference. You know what I mean, on, on the contrary, I got you. See that because the Most High, He's gonna show it to me. I have no problem, like I say. In getting into his word, I mean, he just shows me stuff all the time. Why? Because his word, when his word has already went inside me. And some say, "Well, oh, he he's arrogant." No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. When when it transpired, I was running from him because uh, I asked him a question, and uh, I wasn't expecting the way he answered it. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting him to talk to me, you know, but. His ways are not our ways, and uh, 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 it scared me. And uh, like I said, that, that is only uh, one instance. I mean, I can go on and on. You know, uh, that's why I'm not scared of a challenge. I'm 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 not uh, I'm not scared of anybody that's out here on YouTube or Facebook. I'm not afraid of them. I mean, I'm gonna bring the word just like the Most High give it to me. My brothers and sisters, I mean, my love is to my brothers and sisters. And like I say, I put my heart out to you, to you guys to, to show you uh, that the Most High loves you. I mean, it goes off the scale. I mean, it goes off the scale. And this is not about me. It is about the Most High. Everything that I do is about the Most High. This ain't about uh, LD. Not a real. It, it's about the Most High. It is about our Heavenly Father, the Most High, the one that super rules the heavens and the earth and does whatever he wants to do anytime he wants to. And can't nobody stop him. And I mean nobody. Now, we're here in uh, Proverbs 28. I read verse 20, 26 here. Now let's go a little further. Let's go to Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah. Let's go there real quick, my brothers and sisters. Let's go there. Jeremiah uh, 17. Now watch this in my brothers and sisters. Jeremiah 17. Let's look at verses uh, 5 and 7. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusts in himself, uh, trusts in man, and make it flesh his arms, and whose heart depart from the, from the Lord. Now let, let's read verse 7. It says, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope, uh, hope the Lord is. See, when you begin to go out there and say, well, I can do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do this and I can. See, you're out there in an in a area where you're going to get yourself messed up. I mean, really messed up because, see, you have taken over, tried to take over. Or either thinking that you're taking over. See, that's what Christianity does to you. It, it has you thinking that you have power to do something uh, that uh, you have no control over at all. And like I say, I'm going to prove it to you, my brothers and sisters. I always prove everything that I say. Now, let us go forward. Let's go to um, Psalms 46. Let's go to Psalms 46 here. And let's see what the Most High says here. Psalms uh, 146. Now watch this, my brothers and sisters. Psalms 146. It says here, in verse 3, it says, Put not your trust in prince, nor in the sons of man, in whom there is no help. See that? Well, I'm, I'm going to let pastor pray for me. You're being a fool. Well, let's get the prayer warrior together. You're being a fool. 
Well, let me pray to Jesus. Jesus, help me. You're being a fool. I'm telling you. You're being a fool. See, because you're not trusting in the Most High. When you say the Most High, that means that He is high above all others. So when you got yourself in anybody that's under Him or, 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 or anything that's under Him, then you're ass in trouble. I mean, big time trouble. You, you're going to lose, 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 lose. And I mean that. Now let's go a little further here. Let's go to Job. Let's go to Job chapter 1 here. Now, watch it now, my, my brothers and sisters. See, because Job was a true Hebrew Israelite. Job knew his God. Job, Job knew the, uh, that the Most High, you know, he, he was the one that was supplying everything. Now, let's look at uh, verse 20. Um, Job chapter 1. Let's look at verse 21. Look what it says here. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord giveth, comma, and the Lord hath taken away, hath taken away. Now, y'all know the story. Job done lost everything. Everything. But see, but getting people to understand that when, when something is taken from you, God took it from you. Not that the devil did it. Not that, uh, as a matter of fact, you didn't even have to do anything wrong. Job did nothing wrong. N-O-T. Nothing. Nothing. God, it said Job gave a sacrifice for his children. Even if they forgot, Job said, I got y'all covered. And God came and killed every damn one of them. That's, what, that's why I keep stressing. God's ways are not our ways. And you get these people, you know, saying, well, this and that. This. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They don't have any, they don't even have a clue about what they're talking about. Oh, the devil, this devil, the devil ain't done nothing. God is the one that is in control of everything. This is his place. Now, let's go a little further. <clears throat> we looked at that. Now, let's look at uh, Genesis. Uh, Genesis chapter, chapter 17 of Genesis. Let's go there. Genesis 17. Now watch this, my brothers and sisters. I mean, this here is, is right here in the pages. But all you got to do is ask the Most High to show it to you. He'll show it to you if you're Hebrew. Genesis 17, verse 1. Now look what it says here. Uh, chapter 1, I mean, uh, chapter 17, verse 1. It says, And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Now how can how can you find any weakness in that? He says, I'm almighty. I'm almighty. I'm the almighty God. Now what where I mean is there any room for any weakness there? I mean honest my my, my brother and sister, when you go back and look at the book of Corinthians, the statement that Paul said, how can that be true at all? I mean, can you see how they try to diminish the authority and the greatness of the Most High? I mean, they do it in such subtle ways. And like I say, we, we have individuals that, that come and then try to downplay. Well, it doesn't mean it's, well, what does it mean? What does the foolishness of God mean and the weaknesses of God mean? It, 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 it's stating that God is foolish in some way and that God is weak. In some way. And that couldn't be further from the truth, my brothers and sisters. And I mean that. Now, look what he says. The God says, uh, I am the almighty God. See that? Now let's go to Chronicles. Now watch it right here, my brothers and sisters. Let's go to the book of First Chronicles. It's right in the pages. First Chronicles, uh, let's look at verse 20, chapter 29. Look at chapter 29 in First Chronicles. Now watch this here, my brothers and sisters. Watch this. Right in the pages. Now, First Chronicles chapter 29. Oh, let's look at verses 12, I believe. That's what I want. It says, now look, look what it says here. Both riches and honor come from thee. See that? Who? The Most High? Huh? 
Look what he says now. Go back up and read verse 11, then come down 12, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Either go up, go up there to verse 10 and just read down. But for time's sake, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to cut through just to show you the, the main points. He said, Both riches and honor come from thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might. And in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. See that? God is the one that makes you great. All you smart ass guys out there that think y'all know everything. God is the one. See, just because you can read, that doesn't mean nothing. But just like I say, I, I mispronounce word. I'm stumbling over word. But see, but it ain't me. It's God. God is the one. Not me. And the, my brothers and sisters, they, they come on our page and then they try to insult me. You know, then they come back and try to insult you. You know, because they can't get no leeway. You know, but like I say, hey, you can try all day long. God has not called you. You call yourself. Now, let's go a little further. Let's go to Exodus 15. Let's go back to Exodus 15. Watch it right here, my brothers and sisters. Exodus 15, let's look at verse 11. Now, watch it right here. It says, Exodus 15, verse 11. Uh, that, that the one that I'm on? It says, and when Abel, files came down. No, I, I don't, I know that that's not the one that I'm on. No. That, that that's not it. Not that that's Genesis. Let me look at Exodus. Exodus 15. Let's let's go there. I was in Genesis 15. Pardon me, my brothers and sisters. We we'll get there. Exodus 15. I know it, it. It didn't. It didn't look right. You know. I knew I was in. I was in the wrong place. Okay. Exodus 15. Now let's look at verse 11 here. It says him, "Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the small gods?" See that. Huh? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Nobody. Nobody. Jesus never did anything that anybody did in the Old Testament. Nothing. Not to compare to it. Nothing. And y'all know Joshua. He made the sun stand still, made the, made the moon not come up and made the sun not go down. I mean, that's just one of the mighty acts. Moses parted the Red Sea. Now, Jesus, he didn't part no water. Uh, he, he, he say he walked on the Sea of Galilee, but uh, I, don't, I don't believe he did it myself. And I'm serious. I don't believe that bullshit over there. Now, let's go a little further here. Let's look at um, Psalm 62. Psalm 62. Let's go to my brothers and sisters. Psalm 62. Now let's look, let's look at this passage, passage right here. Psalm 62. Um, let's look at verse 11. It says, you know, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Only, only God. Not Jesus, nor the God. They ain't got no power. When it comes to God, God has all power. He's the Almighty God. Now, let's go a little further. Let's go to uh, 2 Samuel. Well, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. Um, let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 2. Okay, first, that's 2 Samuel. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Now, watch this, my brother and sister. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Let's look at verses 6, 7, and 8. Look what it says. It said, The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. See that? God is the one. Not, not Jesus or the devil or Lucifer or Satan or whoever you want to call. And as I stated in, in other videos, there is not one scripture in the Old Testament where Satan killed any, anybody at any time. Never! The only place that is stated that that he, he, he uh, Satan did anything, he smoked Job, huh, and put balls and sores on him. Other than that, he never he, he never killed him. Even though the, the Most High said that you can't take his life, but he never did. And and then they take that scripture and then then say, well, okay, well, when somebody get killed over in the New Testament, then Satan did it. Now, that could be further from the truth. Satan. 
is one of the Most High's son. He could not do anything but what the Most High tells him to do. That's it. Nothing, nothing more. Because, as a matter of fact, if you read Job and you take take your time with it, God, God and Satan uh, uh, appeared together twice, and he asked him the same questions over. Now, in chapter one, if he had done what the Most High said that that for him to do, he would never came back. In the second chapter, and asked him the same question, and then the, up here, if you go up and look in the, the the latter part of, of uh, chapter one. Job lost all his kids there. All of them. And they lost all their property and everything. But now you never, uh, now if Satan had done that, in chapter 2, why would it state that there was a day that the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also, and God said unto Satan, uh, Have you considered my, my servant Job? Why would he come back and ask him that all over again, and that Job that lost all his kids? That's my question to all, uh, all these smart asses that think they're smart. I mean, it's right in the pages. But if God does, does, does not show it to you, you can't see it. And I keep saying it over and over and over and over. And they still come on the page talking that old dumb ass shit. And God, and, and God hadn't told them anything at any time. Now, let's go here and finish in, in, in uh, Samuel here. Verse 7 said, the Lord make it poor. Look, let me tell you something. If you ain't got two nickels to rub together, God said, I don't want you to have a damn thing. Simple as that. Huh? If you ain't got nothing, then God said, I don't want you to have nothing. And, and then, you know, like, here uh, in this society, they teach you, well, if they can do it, you can do it. Not so. Not so. And you try to figure out why the person of color doesn't have Walmarts and Walgreens and uh, Publix, Winn Dixies, and um, uh, Boeing, like I said, Blue Jet, uh, uh, Delta, uh, any of those. I mean, any any big corp corporation that General Motors, Ford, Chrysler, any any of those uh, uh, places. Thing. Why do you think the black man with color doesn't doesn't have uh, those those things? He does not have those. And don't don't be Hebrew. Shit. Don't don't be the real deal. You ain't got nothing coming. Because you're up on the curse. And many will ask, well, uh, he did it. Well, God wanted him to have it. That's right. You ain't got nothing. He don't want you to have nothing. Now, let's Let's go ahead a, a, a little further him, and and make it rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. See that? I keep saying the Most High is in control of everything. You can try all you want to. If He doesn't want you to have nothing, baby, you're not gonna have nothing. You can try, struggle, wiggle, poop. I don't care what you do. He ain't gonna have nothing. Because he, he says, I don't want you to have it. And that's the, that's the bottom line. Now look what he says in verse 8. He said, he raises up the poor out of the dust. And lifted up the beggar from the dunghill. And set them among prince. And make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. And he has set the world upon them. God has done everything. And there's nothing. You and I or nobody else can change. You can't change nothing. No. Let's go a little further. I'm going to show it to you. Now, let's go here. Um, we in First Samuel here. Okay. Let us go. Um, let's go a little further. I'm going to look at. Um, well. Let's look at. Isaiah 43. Let's look at that. That's a good one. Isaiah 43. Now watch him, my brothers and sisters. Isaiah 43. Watch this right here. Isaiah 43. Let's look at verse 13. It says, Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I work, and who 
shall let it, shall let it. In, in, in other words, what if I do? Who can stop it? Who? That, that's what God is saying. That's why I, I tell you guys all the time. God is not fighting against no no devil. God is not fighting against Lucifer. God is not fighting against Satan. God God explicitly says when I do something, that's that's the bottom line. That's it. That's it. Ain't nobody that's gonna come and change shit. But you allow people that does not know the word of God, neither is God talking to them, and then they'll come and p perpetuate these lies out of the New Testament and then lies that they have heard some someone else quote and there's an invalidity in it in it at, at all. And then they stand firm on it like they're knowing something and don't know shit. Now let's go a little further here. Let let's look at Nehemiah. Now we're gonna go here and find Nehemiah here. Let me turn the pages here and see if I get it. Okay, Nehemiah's numbers. We may have to skip over here for time's sake. Because uh, I worked last night and I worked a lot of hours. And um, I'm trying to get it together here. Nehemiah, Nehemiah uh, the ninth chapter. Let's look at that one. I worked a lot of hours last night and I'm kind of tired. But like I say, uh, if I can work for them, I, I can damn sure work for the Most High. And I don't mind. Nehemiah the ninth chapter. Uh, let us look at um, my notes here. Let's look at uh, verse 6 in the ninth chapter. It says, Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. And thou hast made heaven, the heavens of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth and all things that are therein, the sea and all that is therein, and thou per perverted them all, preserved them all, and the host of heaven worship thee. See that? Alone. Now, God is doing an awful, awful lot of stuff, you know, to be uh, weak, isn't he? A whole lot of stuff he's doing. But, I, but like I say, it, it doesn't make sense at all. But the, the, they say this old bullshit over there, and then people just grab it and, and, and run with it, and then it, it couldn't be further from the truth. Now, let's go, let's go a little further. Let's go to Psalms 115. Psalms 115. Let's, let's go to Psalms 115. Watch it on my brothers and sisters. Psalms 115. We'll get there. Psalms 115. Let's look at verses. Um, let's look at verse 3. Psalm 115. It says, you can start up top and then come down to a verse 3, you know, and then you get a better understanding. It says, but our God is in the heavens. Hath he done whatsoever he hath please? See that? Whatever God wants to do, he does it, and it, it, he does it to please himself. He said, please. He has please. In other words, if he gets pleasure out of everything that he does. Whether he bring evil on you or whether it's good. It's right in the pages. I mean, I, I proved everything that I said. Now, let's go a little further here. That, that was Psalms 115. Let's look at Psalm 135. Let, yeah, let's look at Psalm 135 here. Now, watch this, my brother and sister. Psalm 135. Uh, let's look at verses 1 through uh, 7 here. It says, uh, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Uh, ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praise unto his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord has chosen Jacob unto himself, and Israel for his peculiar treasure. For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all God. See that? Oh, God. It's right in the pages. Right in the pages. Now, now let's go a little further. He causes. See that? He causes. Not that it just happens, but he causes, what? The vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightning, huh? From the rain. He bringeth the winds out of his treasure. All these things the Most High does. He calls. I mean, he, he's running the show. 
Everything that is done, he does it. By himself. Now, let's go a little further. We're in Psalms uh, 130, uh, 35 here. Let us look at uh, Daniel 4. Let's, let's go to Daniel. Daniel the 4th chapter. We'll go to Daniel the 4th chapter. This is one of our favorites. Yeah. These are... Uh, these are the ones that we get for these smart asses that come on that come on our page trying to teach, you know, and and don't don't know a damn thing. Now let's look at Daniel chapter four. Let's read verses uh, thirty five. It says, "And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the armies of heaven, huh?" And among the inhabitants of the earth, God says, I do whatever I want to do, when I want to do it, in heaven and on this planet. Can't nobody stop me? And then he goes on. He says, and none can say to, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, what, what doest thou? See that? Now, like I tell him all the time. They come on our page, Israel, talking about, well, you ought to read this book and look, if any, if, if any books are missing, huh? Who did it? Who did it? That's my question. I'm trying to, I, I mean, I, I can't get these, these smart asses to understand anything. Who, if there are some books missing, by reading what we just read, who did it? It's self-explanatory. The Most High did it. Now, isn't that right? By the right in here. He did it. Now, let's go a little further. Let's go to the book of Lamentations. Lamentations here. See, because these, these smart asses, they come on our page and they want to teach and don't know anything. They don't know nothing about nothing. Now, look at my, my brothers and sisters. Look what it says. Look, look what Lamentations says. And it's right in the page. Lamentation chapter 3 Look at verses 37 It says Who is he That says That saith And it cometh to pass When the Lord Commandeth it not See that And all of them over in Christianity Talking about they can do this and they can do that And I can do this and I can do that If God had not said it Whatever God says, that's what's going to transpire. You can bump your gums and you can pray and you can do all the things you want to do. You are, and, and nothing going to happen. Unless the Most High says, that, that's the way I want it to be. I mean, it's right here in the pages. Now, let's go a little further. Uh, we did the uh, Lamentation. Now, let's go to the book of Ecclesiastics. A very, very, very good uh, 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 lesson here in Ecclesiastes and it, it brings out a whole lot of different points you know that that shows a, a, a individual that God is in control God is in control of everything now we're going to look at uh, Ecclesiastes verse uh, chapter 7 very 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 good scriptures uh, chapter 7 let's look at verses uh, 12 and 13 Okay, well, let's look at let's look at ver, uh, uh, verse eleven too. It says, "Wisdom is good with an inheritance, and by it there is uh, a profit to them that see the sun. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. See that? But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. See, when you don't have any wisdom." You ain't got no life. You don't. And like I say all the time, they, they come and be talking and, and, and saying things and, and, and they, don't have, uh, they don't even have a clue. They don't, have, they don't even have any idea what they're talking about. Now look what he says here. See, because they want to they wanna make, uh, they want to change God's word. You can't change God's word. Listen, you, you can't change nothing that God has already ordained. And, and like I said, um, God said, I have chosen Jacob. I read that, I read that earlier. In Israel, f f to be a peculiar treasure. He said, Jacob is my inheritance. That's what he said. 
I mean, and see, like I said, I am not here to lie to anyone. Like I say, I'm looking, I'm looking for my people. That's all. I stress that all the time. My love and my, my devotion is to my people, whom the Most High has sent me to. But many would try to put themselves in with the Hebrew Israelites. And I'm telling you, you're wasting your time. And, and, and like, when I, like when I tell you something, I tell you I can prove it. I can prove it. I will prove it. I mean, God never said at any time he was going to, he was going to engraft anybody else in to his family. Not at any time. But, I mean, some may not want to hear it, you know what I mean? But uh, I'm, not going to, uh, I'm not going to try to change God's word because I can't change his word. And that's, that's just the way it is. I mean, hey, this thing was written. I'm just so glad that I am in, you know, the part that is the good part. I mean, honest. I mean, I, th that that's the way it is. Now, let's look at Ecclesiastes. Like I said, chapter seven. Now we can read verse twelve. It says, "For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to 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 them that have it." Consider that this is for these smart asses that come on our, our page. That this is for y'all. Consider the work of God, for who can make that that straight which He has made crooked? See that? Not that's my question to all you smart asses. Y'all want to change something? Y'all want to change? And, and and see the thing about this is, He explicitly let let you know what He made was crooked. It wasn't straight, huh? Since y'all think that He is all this old Mister Mister Goody Two Shoes, uh 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 uh. Uh-uh, y'all got this thing so wrong. Uh-uh, no, he's not. Look what he says here. He said, who can make that which straight, which he had made crooked? Nobody. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Now, let's let's go to the eighth chapter of uh, Ecclesiastic. Let's look at verse 17. Now, look what it says here, Ecclesiastic chapter 8, verse 17. It says, then I beheld all the works of God that a man cannot find out. These smart asses. The work that is done under the sun. Because though a man labor to seek it out, they read, they go and read other books. They, they, they go and research. Try to find all this out. See, Israel, I tell you all the time, I can prove everything and I do it every time. I, listen, listen. The most I give me this. I am not capable of doing this on my own. And I prove everything I say every time. Look what he says here. He says, they labor. He says, let's start over at 17. He says, then I beheld all the work of God that a man cannot find out. That work that is done under the sun. Because... Though a man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. Yea, further, though a wise man, yeah, the, the one that think that they, they're wise, oh, I've been educated by Western civilization. Don't make a damn bit of good with God. It don't, it don't mean shit when it comes to the Most High. And look what he says here. Though a wise man think to know it, that's why I tell you all, all, all the time. You run on this page, think you got something, and then when you get it, you find out you ain't got shit because the most I always give me something to turn your ass around. Look what he says here. Yet shall he not be able to find it. That's, that's the most high saying. You, you're not going to be able to find it. But he showed it to me. Now, let's go a little further. Let's look at Ecclesiastics chapter 10. Well, chapter 10, no, let's, let's look at chapter 3. Chapter 3. Now watch this, my brother and sister. Please ask it, chapter 3. Let's look at verses 10 and 11. He says, I have seen the travail which God has given to the sons of men, huh, to be exercised in it. The work, he says, he has made every, everything beautiful 
in his time. Also, he has set the world in their hearts. See that? Oh, smart ass guys. So that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. See that? Tell you. Uh-uh. You don't, you don't know this unless God shows it to you. You can read all the other all the other all the other books you want to read. You can go to colleges and and let and let man learn you and you, you can you can do all these things. But you still gonna come up empty-handed because the Most High had not told you, baby. All that shit they're telling you ain't about shit. Now let's go to Ecclesiastes eleven chapter. Now watch this, my brother and sister. Ecclesiastes the 11 chapter for these smart ass guys, just like I said, and I mean that. Uh, chapter 11, let's look at verses 5. It says here, As thou knowest, not what? That's what I want y'all smart guys to understand. No, not, not, no, not, not that you know, no, not, huh? No, not what is the way of the Spirit, and you don't know. He said, Nah, how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Even so, thou knowest not the work of God who maketh all things. Right in the pages. See, so y'all can read all the books you want to read. You can go and dig up books. Don't make any difference with me. Not the most high. Because all the information that you're getting ain't worth a damn because he doesn't he, he doesn't recognize uh, that information the only information that he recognizes is the information that he reveals to those that he have chosen to reveal it to my brothers and sisters we here we wish that this has been a a blessed lesson and, and that uh we have been encouraged to trust the most high word and only trust his huh uh, that's what we are all about here about educating our brothers and sisters in the word of the Most High. My brothers and sisters, until next time, Shalom.